All right, Slime Bridge is a really fun one. I'm going to go in here to my tool palette. We'll grab a sphere, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode. And I'm going to switch to Skin Shader 4. So when I turn on Polyframe, we can look at the wireframes a little bit easier. Uh, so let's make Poly Mesh 3D so we can sculpt on this object. And under these tool slime bridge, you have a slime bridge button, which of course you can assign a hotkey to. And then you've got some options down here. Basically, all you need is a mask and to click that button and to play with these sliders and that'll get you uh, some sort of a result. Now, if you just have one object and you mask on it and then you say slime bridge, it'll kind of fold in on itself, which could be cool for some sort of like weird alien growth or, you know, something, I don't know, that'll look like that. And then, of course, you can play with these uh, options here, but it's a little bit easier to show uh, if you use two masks and you can use two masks on the same object. So you can go a mask here and a mask here and then you can slime bridge those together. And basically what it's doing, if I turn on polyframe, is it's creating bridges. So we have bridges set to 20. It's creating bridges and then branches. So branches branch off of primary bridges and then capillaries branch off uh, between both of those and they kind of add little smaller connectors here. And you can also do that between objects. So if I hit control Z here and then control drag to unmask this entire object, I'm gonna hit W, control drag out a copy, control drag to unmask. And now I've got two spheres here and the same, it's in the same subtool. So I just, again, just duplicated that off by control dragging uh, with my gizmo. Just hit W on your keyboard and then you can control drag in a direction that'll duplicate that. So now I can go mask on this side. Again, masking, just holding down control. That'll turn it to mask pin and then you mask one side, you mask the other, you go through here, you click slime bridge. And based on your settings here, it's going to create an interesting network of slimes. And that's basically it. Uh, there's a few things I'm gonna call out and then we'll go through some examples. So stick around if you wanna see that. Uh, if we go in here to Polyframe, you're gonna see, first of all, it actually gives you really nice geometry. It's nice quad geometry. And it is, another thing you'll notice, is that the geometry is pretty consistent. You know, the, this is, uh, you can see the density of this geo carries through from the density of the slime. So by Control Z to undo that, uh, let's play around with a few of these sliders here. So bridges, uh, if we crank this down, let's say two, and then, uh, you know what, let's turn branches and capillaries off. You can basically just create a slime bridge uh, with bridges. Now, it says two in here, and it made two of them, and so you would expect like, oh, is it super accurate? Not necessarily. Basically, as you're playing with these sliders, it's gonna more or less depend on your resolution, the size of your mask, all sorts of things go into what these numbers could represent. So at the end of the day, you know, if you crank this up to like, okay, I want 26 and then you click slime bridge and you go through here, you may or may not have 26. Again, it's kind of dependent on a few uh, variables there. Uh, but generally speaking, you crank this up, you're gonna get more bridges. So again, we'll undo this, we'll say, okay, nine here. And then if we undo that, we'll say branches. So we'll crank this up uh, branches up to maybe nine as well. So now you're gonna see, instead of just branching from one object to the other, now you're going to have little bridges built in that go between the main branches. And of course, like you would probably expect, a little tertiary action here. Uh, we'll crank capillaries up to six, and now you're going to have a bunch of more in interspersed uh, bridges, little slimy bridges in here. Uh, one thing you may notice is it's kind of bowing out. You can see it's kind of bubbling uh, in here. So that very first one is tension. If you crank that all the way to the right and create a slime bridge, that's going to be like, you know, you just kind of pulled this object apart. So it's very taut, very stringy. And I'll be honest, this is probably what I use 90% of the time. And then I modified this as needed. So just kind of show this off. I'm gonna turn uh, capillaries down to zero, branches down a little bit. I'm gonna go hold down control, uh, mask pin. I'm just gonna mask between these objects here. Again, tension all the way up to 100. And then I'm gonna slime bridge across between them. And then once you've done that, if you turn on polyframe, you'll notice every single one of these bridges gets its own polygroup, and then these uh, branches over here get their own polygroup. It's sharing between these two. If you need to, you can just isolate these and be like, hey, I want these to be separate. No problem, just go down here to polygroups and then say auto groups, and anything that's not vert welded will get its own polygroups. You can kind of separate them out like that if you need to. So if you ever need to isolate just the strands, you can, uh, if your original object was one polygroup, you can hold down control shift and tap and then control shift and drag and that'll isolate the visibility to just your slimes. Uh, another thing that I've been doing is holding down control shift, going to select lasso. Um, and if you just grab most of your slimes, you can do control shift Q and that's visibility. If you go down here to your visibility menu, you can see there's grow all, which will grow everything that's vert welded and then also um, grow to polygroups. So control shift Q again, 
that would just grab all of your slime. So if this had multiple polygroups, that's just another way to grab them. Of course, you can also just control shift and tap through here if you need to uh, using select rectangle and that'll just grab uh, these individual polygroups. Now, if you just wanna grab a little piece of a slime, again, you can just control shift tap and this grabbed a bunch of them. So I'm gonna go into again, polygroups, auto groups here. So now when I grab this one, it'll be isolated. So you can go through here and you can move, scale, rotate, use any brushes, go in here to inflate brush if you want to, or hold down shift to smooth. That's usually something I'll do. So I'll try to, you can even go down here to an overall, underneath your deformation menu, you can go in here to inflate and you can do an overall inflate. And then in the middle here, you can hold down shift and smooth and you'll see it'll kind of make them a little stringier. So it'll enhance the illusion that it's maintaining its volume here and then as it's getting stretched thinner and thinner it's uh, it's really really thinning out in the middle and then if you use the new uh, redshift renderer uh, you can go through here and add some subsurface scattering and put a light behind it and again it'll be kind of a thick substance here and then the, it'll thin out here and you'll see the light shine through your object of course if you hit w that'll bring the gizmo up you can go in here to your little gizmo gear icon and we can do like maybe a twist deformer so you can go through here and you can twist these things around so if you want to have a little bit of fun with twist or if you want to just play with the strands you can go in here i mean any number of deformers you can use i'm just going to show you a few a few so like ben kerr for example you can go in here and crank up that resolution you can go through here and you can kind of use this to uh bend stretch uh twist through here so you can have a little bit of fun uh kind of playing around with these options Go ahead and undo that. And another thing you can do is uh, remember you do have access to, if we go up here to the dynamics menu, I'm just gonna drag this over to the left uh, and we turn on our floor. You can see, let's orient ourselves in space here. So here's Y up and then towards the floor is where gravity is gonna pull by default. You can set the direction, but we'll just go ahead and keep it as is. I am gonna turn off floor collision unless you want these things to like collide on the floor. But what I'll usually do is I'll just control shift tap these objects here, control tap to mask them, control shift tap to bring everything else back. And then with these things unmasked, or in fact, you can actually control tap on here to kind of blur that mask a bit. Uh, and then we can have gravity turned on, floor collision off, and then you can just run the simulation and that'll go ahead and just kind of sag these little strands down. Um, another thing you can do is while you're doing that, you can turn on inflate, you can play with the inflate amount. So while it's running the simulation, uh, they'll stay a little bit inflated. Of course, you can do inflate, expand, you know, again, play around with these sliders and you can get some really interesting effects. Adding uh, cloth simulation and uh, your strand geometry. And remember, the geometry is actually pretty nice. So if you go through here and you're like, okay, you know what? I want to turn, these are cool as mucus strands, but I want to turn them into cables. Well, if you take the uh, geometry here, so control shift tap this geometry, control shift drag to invert that. Uh, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And that'll just leave these strands behind. And actually, now that I say that, it might get a little hectic because we do have uh, branches that branch off, but let's go ahead and take our undo slider back to where we just had our two opposing uh, objects here. And we'll talk about one more thing now that I'm thinking about it. Control drag to unmask. And you so you basically, you saw how these things interacted with uh, this kind, this resolution of geometry. And you can do it with any type of geometry. You can do it with, you know, Dynamesh geometry or Sculptus Pro, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have polygons, uh, it'll work. So again, just to show you, here's the slime bridge at this resolution. So if I wanna lower the resolution on these, I'm gonna control drag. We're gonna go to geometry, Ziri mesher. Uh, do half and then just Ziri mesh. And it's a little bit bigger, let's do it again. There we go. So now we've got a much larger geometry. So if I go through here, and then with the exact same settings, go through here in slime bridge, I get a much different result, right? Uh, and in fact, we have um, bridges and branches and uh, turned on, but you can see we didn't really get, we got one branch. I told it three, it gave us one. Again, that's gonna be dependent on the resolution of your geometry, the size of your masks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but for the cables that I was talking about, let's crank branches down to zero, let's crank bridges up, and we'll just go ahead and, um, well, I'm putting this across here uh, you know what, this will work. So uh, I wanna sag these in between. So let's go ahead and just use uh, gravity again. So I'm gonna again, control shift tap here, control tap in my canvas to mask it. Of course, all your masking options, if you're new to ZBrush, and you need, if you're new to ZBrush, go watch the intro to ZBrush 
playlist on my YouTube channel. But if you go in here to masking, here's all of your masking options. I'm using the hotkeys for that. So again, control tap in your document to mask what's visible. Control shift tap to bring visibility back on all my objects. Um, you can click blur mask or just control tap on your object to blur your mask. And then we can go in here and we can just run the simulation on here. But in this case, uh, it looks like I can just keep that mask pretty tight. There we go. So we're going to sag these cables through here. And what I mean by that is, again, if I control shift tap the purple, control shift drag, geometry modify topology, uh, delete hidden, I can go through here. And because it gave me nice even quads across here, I can actually say, uh, use my Z model brush, B, Z, M, hover over an edge, and we can say poly group, poly loop. So I can take this one, and then as I tap this one, tap alt, so I get two separate ones. So all the way through here, I can just go through, and I'm just putting alternating poly loops in here. And I won't do it for all of them, but you can. Uh, so control shift tap between those to grab both of those, and then control shift drag, and then geometry modify topology delete hidden. And essentially what we have is paths through here. So now I can go in here to stroke. Let's drag this over here. Uh, curve functions, we're gonna go ahead and say frame our polygroup mesh here. And then we can go in here to B, I for brush insert. Let's go in here to IMM curve, hit M. And right down the middle, we can just put scales or a bike chain or a necklace or whatever you decide for your IMM. And then you can just frame all of these meshes. So now instead of slime, you can drape cables. Uh, like a hose here you can and of course you can make your draw size a little smaller and then if you need it to sink into uh, the strips that we had you can go in here to the brush options in your brush menu go in here to depth and then just turn this embed down to zero and then retap to update and there you go so now we can use slime to kind of create bridges between objects and then you can use cloth dynamics to sag it and then you can use uh, IMM brushes and framing to kind of frame these objects. Of course, you want to get rid of this. Um, if you're having a hard time tapping away from your object, just go in here to stroke, say curve functions delete, and then our original objects back here are still masked. So you could, um, if you want to, you can go in here to like split unmasked points, and then that'll split your strips into their own uh, subtool from the hoses here. If you don't need these anymore, you can just delete that out of here, and now you just have sagging hoses. So that's one way you could use this. Uh, let's load up some example files. So if you caught my Waffle Ira live stream that we did, uh, you can see it's here on my R Station channel. You can go through and watch how we did these little slime strands. There's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, but what we're going to use this time is slime bridge. I'm going to alt tap the subtool. We're going to delete it out of our scene and then right onto this waffle maker here. I'm going to go to geometry. We're going to say delete higher. So I'm going to go into BI brush insert. We're going to grab an IMM primitive. Let's do IMM primitive, not H, not the one with the hole in the back. Go up here and select a sphere. I'm going to drag that onto my object here. I'm going to scale this down a bit and rotate it on. And now that it's, uh, it's an object on here and it's unmasked, I can go through here again. We're going to say split unmasked points. So that's split it off into its own subtool here. And then I'm going to control drag this. So control drag down and we'll put it right down here. So if I control drag and I go into solo mode, you're gonna see this is my object and I basically want a slime bridge between here. So it looks like, you know, he had a little goopy part on his body that kind of stuck uh, to the top here. Now, if we go in here to polyframe, you're gonna see this is my uh, geometry and it's fairly uh, large geometry. So if I slime bridge between here, it's probably, if I look at my settings, you know, I'm gonna say, hey, let's turn capillaries uh, down a bit. Uh, so 20 bridges, but the geometry is so large uh, that I don't really think it's going to give me 20. Another thing I don't want to do is I want this to look like the lid is just pulled, peeled up off of him. So not sagging too much. I'm going to go in here to tension and crank that up to 100. There we go. So there's our basic slime bridge here. And again, if you want to, you can control drag if you want to uh, rearrange this geometry. An easy way to do that is again, Ziri Mesher. We'll do double this time and then I'll double my uh, poly count here so now when I control drag on here and if you want to underneath your brush you can hold down control go in here to auto masking and turn on uh, back face masking with control held down and that'll ensure that it's only going to mask uh, the front part of your object it won't like go around and mask the back part so we've got our mask here again and then we're going to do another slime bridge 
There we go. So now we're getting a few more bridges now that the geometry is a little tighter. Again, that was zero meshing the geometry. If you control D to subdivide, um, so geometry divide, and then you try to bridge between here, it'll tell you you can't do that with multiple subdivision levels. In that case, just go in here and say delete lower and then go ahead and run your slime bridge. And you can see with even more geometry, uh, we're getting more uh, branches and uh, bridges created. So anyway, that's our slime bridge here. I may again, like we talked about before, go in here to deformation. Maybe run a quick inflate overall just to kind of thicken everything out and then manually go through here with my shift brush, just holding down shift and smoothing just to kind of make these little inside, you know, as again, as the tension is increasing in the middle, it's kind of thinning down. And now it looks like this part got peeled uh, up and off of it. So we got some waffle batter and then some peeling or some stretchy slime bridgey stuff happening uh, from top to bottom. Now in this example here, you can see we already have some spit created. So again, if you caught that live stream, uh, you saw the how we how we went through and made uh, that that kind of spit strands. And we're gonna again we're gonna use a slime bridge for this. However, we have an object that is our lips basically and then we have an object that's our teeth and then an object that's our tongue um, and we want a slime bridge between multiple subtools uh, and then I want to separate those slimes out as saliva uh, so how I would do that is I would go down here and I would say first of all I would say all low just to drop everything down to its lowest subdivision level and then anything I want to have merged together I'm gonna isolate um, or do visibility by turning off my eyeballs here or what you could do is you can go in here and say merge visible and just merge everything together and that's going to throw out a merged copy of your object here at the lowest resolution geometry which is what we had uh, selected so now i can go through here and say okay i want spit to go from the tongue uh, up here to the lip and i was control shift tapping so control shift tap the tongue and then control drag to invert that selection uh, control shift tap the lips and you know what maybe even the teeth so i'm going to control shift tap the teeth here control shift drag to invert that selection and then like we talked about before uh, previously, we had done a visibility grow to polygroups. In this case, I want to grow all. Control Shift A. So Control Shift A will grab all of those subtools that I want to bridge spit between. And if I Control Shift drag, these are all the extra subtools that I really don't care about. So I'm going to go through here and say geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, and now I just have this geometry, all part of one subtool. And again, I am going to be bridging between like, you know, this geometry and that geometry. But remember, this is just temporary. We still have our good geometry over here in this Z tool. This is just kind of a working file just so I get the spit strands going, right? So I'm going to mask. I want to say, um, okay, some sp strands from uh, this lip here down to this tongue. So we're going to mask between those. Let's go down here. Let's turn our bridges down quite a bit. Uh, branches down quite a bit, capillaries down to zero. Um, oh, and slime bridge, uh, we want to do tension all the way up. So again, it's kind of like pulling between here. And in fact, let's control drag, let's hit control D to subdivide one time. And I'm going to go up here to geometry, delete lower, and then we'll try that again. We'll say, hey, mask here to here, give me a slime bridge. There we go. So now we have kind of a uh, spit direction on there. Now, if you did want to go through here manually, again, these all have their own polygroups, but remember, so you can isolate, you know, from here, mask, invert that mask, and then go through here and, you know, use your move brush. You can also go in here to your move brush and go down here to auto masking topological, and then use topology to kind of go through here and say, hey, I just want to move. Although since this geometry is connected, we maybe have to train our, turn our range down to maybe 1.5. So again, the first piece of geometry that you touch will be the geometry that you move. So you can go through here and you can mask and move, or you can go through here with move topology and kind of move these strands apart um, if you want to. And in fact, if you are also so inclined, you can go through here and be like, hey, you know what? I don't want this huge strand right here and maybe not this, this one right here. So we can say, okay, that's enough strands for me. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden, uh, just run a geometry modified topology, close holes. And that'll go ahead and close uh, any remaining holes for you. So again, you, you have quite a bit of control over uh, your spit strands. So uh, let's undo back to where we just had our original masks here. And uh, let's try on the bottom of the tongue here. And then over here to this lip. And again, we'll do a slime bridge. And in fact, let's crank uh, the bridges up just a little bit here. And I'm going to extend uh, my mask here. So lip, tongue, 
slime bridge on one side. And then I'm going to go inside of this lip down here to this tongue slime bridge. And then maybe another one top of that lip to the tongue over here slime bridge. And again, I just want the bridges themselves. I don't want the rest of the head. So what I'll do is uh, I'll go through control shift tap, you know, the lips here, I think, uh, and the tongue contain most of the connectors and then the head around here. There we go. So this is all of our uh, little spit pieces there. So I'm going to say geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then I'm going to rotate my camera, control shift, grab select lasso, grab a big chunk of those slimes that are sitting there and then do another visibility grow wall. Control shift A, control shift drag. There we go. So we basically isolated our spits. So I'm going to say geometry modified topology. I'll do it up here. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Um, and then if I want to cap these, which generally I do, I'm just going to run a close holes and then I'll go ahead and put holes over my caps here. And then we can go back to our original file here. We can say, oh, okay, we don't need these spits anymore. So we can delete these here, just alt tapping them and then deleting them out of my scene. And then I'm going to say append, and then we're going to put in our spits here. So that'll be our little slime bridges here. And then just like we did before, we can hold down shift and then smooth these out in the middle and then maybe go in here with our inflate brush and inflate the bottoms a little bit here and then use our move brush to kind of move these into place. So again, you can go through here and you can say, I mean, we kind of went overboard on the, the bridges and stuff, but <laughs> you know, maybe you do, maybe do fewer uh, if you're going to use this for, because he's, he's looking a little bit uh, extra gross, which uh, I don't know, I suppose isn't a terrible thing. Uh, and also remember too, when you go to render this, if this is going to be, you know, transparent again, using that you know, render, redshift renderer, and you want to use, you know, glass for the spit or something like that, um, it's not going to be quite as overpowering as uh, this is just being opaque. But anyway, there you go. That's there. There's a way to, you know, just use it generally to create slime bridges and then how to incorporate it into a little bit more of a complex object and get those uh, working as its own subtool. Actually, one more quick thing I want to show since uh, I just remembered. Let's go back to our merged version. I'm just going to take the undo slider all the way back here. Uh, and let's say control shift tap uh, on the head here, then control shift A, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And let's say I want to put some slime bridge spikes on the top of this guy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is again, BI brush insert IMM primitives, hit M. Let's go ahead and grab, doesn't really matter, but uh, a sphere, drag it out on my head here, hit W so I can use my gizmo to pull this up. And I'm just going to make a mohawk of slimes uh, emanating from this guy's head. So I'm going to go through here, I'm going to mask the bottom of this one and then the bottom of this one. Go back down here to slime bridge these together. One more thing I did want to mention. Uh, we talked about um, moving with topological, so you can just grab one slime and uh, move it around uh, within reason. There's a range in there. Um, and then also control shift tapping, and then you can control tap and invert that and to just move the slime around. You can also, if you hit uh, W and then control drag down, uh, an object you can actually kind of mask along it so if you wanted to mask like half the slime you can do that another option is holding down control and then going here to mask lasso backing your camera way off and that'll actually again with mask lasso give you a nice smooth fall off in case you needed to um, you know do any soft fall off you type stuff let's go ahead and mask that out there we go um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention, uh, for example, on this branch, if you control drag down the branch, you can also isolate uh, just areas there. And of course, if you just hold down control shift and click and then control drag down, again, it's going to mask it down uh, the geometry there. So just something I wanted to bring up. But anyway, uh, back here to the slime. So again, we're just going to very quickly, let's hold down control, go back to mask pin. We're going to mask here to here, slime bridge, here to here, slime bridge, and finally here to here, slime bridge. And now uh, let's say we wanted to turn these into spikes. So what I can do is hold down control shift, go to select rectangle, uh, control shift, tap the poly group that was our original spheres here, control shift, drag to invert that. 
Again, geometry modified topology delete hidden, which is geometry modified topology delete hidden right here. You know what? We'll go ahead and do a close holes. And then I'm going to hold down shift, go in here to Sculptures Pro with shift held down, just choose Sculptures Pro. And what that'll allow you to do is just kind of eat away geometry. So you can go through here and you can kind of just chew away uh, the top part of the geo and it'll just leave you with uh, spikes. So if you wanted to use a slime bridge type thing uh, gen to generate spikes, you can. And again, just using Sculptors Pro is just an easy way to kind of eat geometry away. You don't have to, you can go through and you know delete geometry uh, using other methods. Um, that's just an easy way to kind of get that type of result.